hopping inside for the first time here. See what this cabin has to offer. Nice center console there. Ooh, this smells good. I love new car smell. 1,500 miles on it. Guess who is in the passenger seat of the Ridgeline with me? You're gonna recognize this guy from YouTube fame, 800,000 <laughs> subscribers worth. And he happens to be here on a Volkswagen event, mm -hmm. which is taking place just south of town. So, Sofian, how's uh, Phoenix treating you so far? It's been lovely. I love the weather here. It's just, <laughs> it's literally 20 to 30 degrees warmer, and I was able to sit out by the pool with a drink earlier today. You caught us just before <laughs> the inferno sets in here in the next six weeks or so. But we happen to be in a press car of all things. I'll show you real quick. This is my 2021 Ridgeline Sport. This is um, the original Ridgeline had this. I'm learning as I go here, I but Sofian is educating me <laughs> on how the uh, multi-function rear door operates. The coolest feature about the Ridgeline is the dual mode tailgate. Mm -hmm. It just needs to be damped. It's supposed to have a 110 outlet in it somewhere. I can never find it. What are we looking at? Yeah, that's why I was like, it's sealed Ooh, off. Smell it, smell it. Oh. Ooh, polyurethane. Isn't that mm. hot? <laughs> Ooh, I'm getting high. <laughs> Ooh, it's better than drugs. Wow, <laughs> there you go. Just starting to get acquainted with the Ridgeline in and out. I gotta say, I really don't mind the cloth seats. They are comfortable, cozy, and probably Pretty easy to clean. Really nice storage uh, system here. Huge compartment. So I'm gonna try some old school tech mixed with new school tech and load up a newly downloaded song from my ancient iPod in here. Hey everybody, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet out here in the desert of uh, Northeastern Phoenix area. This is about I don't know, maybe uh, an hour and 15 minutes from my house. Have the ridge line out here on some back roads. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon here. And perfect countryside to put this new pickup truck to its test. As most of you know, the ridge line went through a number of enhancements for the 2021 model year. So I've been having some fun with it out here on the back roads. This truck obviously has the HPD goodies, which stands for Honda Performance Development, which is uh, really just a cosmetic package primarily. It's got wheels, the decals, a different grill. I'm gonna go ahead and run through my bullet point lists. Uh, anybody who's seen my reviews knows that I'm pretty organized in the fact that I like to kind of do a debrief at the end of an experience with a vehicle just to summarize my thoughts, whether they be uh, good or bad, and then uh, we'll see what you guys think. As I narrate here, I'm gonna to refer to my chicken scratch notes here. Uh, obviously, 2021 Ridgeline Sport. Now, this is equipped with the Honda Performance Development uh, exterior package, which at the end of the day is really just a cosmetics package as opposed to any kind of performance or suspension upgrades. Uh, the HPD stuff is obviously the fender flares here, the decals in the back, and um, there's one on the tailgate as well. We have the grill, which is specific. So uh, it's interesting to note that the regular Ridgeline has uh, horizontally configured slats, whereas these are described as being sort of more scalloped. You can see the shape here. The Ridgelines are all powered by a 280 horsepower, three and a half liter VTEC with a nine speed automatic transmission. This example is finished in platinum white over a black cloth interior, and it was manufactured in Lincoln, Alabama. Uh, Price-wise, Ridgelines start at 36,490, and they run up as high as 43,920. Uh, as far as trim lines are concerned, as I have mentioned, this Sport Edition is based upon a base trim, and so it came in at just a touch over 40,000, but keep in mind that does include a $2,800 add-on for those HPD 
uh, features. It's worth noting that uh, Honda trucks, and I say trucks, I'm talking about all five uh, trucks, CRV, HRV, Pilot, Passport, and Ridgeline, are all doing really well sales-wise. Uh, Pre-pandemic, these vehicles were all on a pretty strong roll um, to hit records and break records. Let's talk real quick about what's new for 2021 and some of the feature content inside here. So it's worth noting that, uh, let me turn the fan off, so a uh, volume knob didn't used to be included here and now is, which is kind of a, a nice convenience to have. Uh, and additionally, some changes that were made to the powertrain were a lower first gear ratio. Uh, they did make Honda Sensing Safety Tech standard and they've incorporated Android Auto and Apple CarPlay into here. As far as other interior amenities, one thing that they did change was they made the rear doors open a little bit wider. Also, the tailgate is now power locking, and they made some improvements to the in-bed audio system. Uh, this truck actually doesn't have that because it's based on the, the uh, base trim, but uh, the Honda representatives told us that uh, it's a pretty awesome system. Let's look real quick at what I didn't necessarily love about the Ridgeline, and again, my experience is going to differ from all of yours, so please do go ahead and test drive one for yourself uh, instead of taking my word for it. Um, some of the other Honda vehicles I've driven that have the nine-speed automatic have the same characteristics in terms of just a little bit of throttle lag when you tip into it. Um, maybe something that could be tuned out or, uh, you know, just something to get used to. Again, I come from a primarily full garage of manual transmission cars, so automatics of modern era are a little bit new to me. Uh, I found the infotainment to be pretty intuitive, although one thing that was kind of weird I wanted at some points to change the source and I was kind of working with the volume at the same time. When you change the volume here, it covers up the source button and you, I couldn't get to it. So I was kind of just, it felt like I was, you know, experiencing a little bit of a lag just in terms of letting the screen catch up to what I was trying to do. Uh, this one, interestingly enough, because it is a base model, doesn't have XM radio. So I don't see that here, uh, which I thought would be sort of like in this day and age should come on pretty much everything. Um, I'm not huge on the HPD body cladding. Uh, I feel like it's a little bit much. Kind of takes me back to the Honda Element era of just like a lot of black trim everywhere. Um, additionally, I think this thing could use a tad more ground clearance. So obviously there's this little black air dam that you see I brushed up against some shrubs or something out in the desert yesterday, but um, this definitely could use a little bit more clearance just in terms of traversing some of those more technical trails. I know people aren't going to take their ridgeline to Moab, you know, but definitely would go a long way. Maybe even something that could be incorporated with the HPD gear is a little bit of a lift, at least up here in the front. And then, um, you know, obviously I talk a little bit sometimes about the distaste I have for auto stop start. I guess I get that it's a, a reality that, you know, every car that's coming out nowadays has that. And that's pretty much it for the stuff I jotted down that I didn't fall in love with, but let's look at everything I did love. I demoed in the intro video. I do love the dual action tailgate. Uh, this is my list here of the pros. Um, I drew a line between ride height and ground clearance because I know there's like very much a trade-off there. You can't have a lifted vehicle that gives you as much confidence inspiring handling on a road as you would with one that's closer to the ground. So maybe the engineers figured this was the perfect balance of being capable, but also, you know, inspiring confidence on the road, but it, it rides amazingly. It's super smooth on the road. Um, I love the keyless tech. Obviously I've got the key in it right now because it's in the on position, but it has the smart access and the push button start. Um, the lighting is cool. I really dig the uh, front end treatment. Obviously the grill for 2021 is a little bit more, um, rugged looking uh, as compared to previous Ridgeline years. And I love the cloth interior. I, I don't know, I guess it's because mostly I'm sitting on old leather stuff, but uh, these are super comfortable. And I feel like, especially in the summertime here in Arizona, having cloth might not ne necessarily be a bad thing. Um, storage solutions in this thing are immense. I don't know if I showed you guys the uh, console here, but this thing, Op opens up into a huge bin, kind of like, I think the MDX has one of these too, I have a baseball cap in here, but 
just a ton of room, a lot of storage solutions, a little tray that you can fold up here, and um, as well as the one inside the bed. And I don't know that I'll be able to open it here with the um, garage door shut, but this whole piece right here opens up into a, a drainable cooler, basically. So you can throw your ice in there. Um, you know, if you're having a big camp out or party, uh, you, the Ridgeline could sort of be the uh, center of attention. And uh, the rear seats do fold up. I picked up a friend from the airport in this thing and the bottom piece here folded up so he could just throw his uh, rollaway luggage right here on the, on the floor inside the door. And then um, all Ridgelines are all wheel drive now. So I think uh, that was maybe a new change for 2021 as well. But I think that sort of lends itself to going along with the whole, you know, making the truck demonstrate its true capabilities thing. And they definitely nailed it with that. Um, that's pretty much it. So, I mean, all in all, for sure, way more things that I loved than those that I didn't love. And this could make itself into a really uh, versatile all around vehicle. I think it's, it's the truck really, as they say, for people who didn't necessarily think they needed a truck. And I think it could come in super handy for folks who are maybe like do-it-yourselfers or they have a pet or they go camping, uh, do a little bit of towing or even just have, you know, motorcycles or jet skis uh, because the capabilities are there and you're really not sacrificing sort of the comfort or the, um, you know, the on-road driving feel that you would for a traditional truck. So anyway, thanks for uh, checking this thing out with me. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, talk to you later. Mm -hmm.